everything in your life is coming to a head for this new moon. She is a savage one, okay? She is not playing around. We are reaching a boiling point with this new moon, but I'm going to talk about how you're going to move through it that's going to help you and actually end up being good for you if you bear with and watch the first part of this video. <laughs> this is a very, very intense time, no matter where you are, but in the US, we have the elections coming up. I know I used to talk a lot more about things going on in the world and in the country. Let me know if you would like some of my opinions on that or not, if you would like to just stick to the astrology, because I know sometimes it can just feel like, gosh, I just don't want to hear about political stuff because it's everywhere, right? And I'm not even sure that I would have a very popular opinion or not, I don't know, <laughs> but I will say that either way, we can feel that big things are coming, big changes are happening in the collective, in the universe. We feel that things are changing and we are on the brink of two very, very different paths. I don't think the world is going to end um, if one path gets chosen over the other. I think that right now, we as a humanity are going through very, very intense times as things that have been hidden or in the darkness for a very long time are now coming to light so we can really see the truth. We can really see where we've been giving our power away to different structures, to different institutions, to different people, etc. And it is a time of taking that power back and waking up. I know for me, I've been awake <laughs> for years, but I feel like this wave of awakening that's happening recently has woken me up on all new levels and I've had to realize some of these things myself personally. This new moon in Scorpio, okay, has some really deep and powerful wisdom that it's bringing with us that if you're open to, you will receive, okay? So let's get into it. Welcome back, you guys. My name is Tawny Michelle. If you are new here, I talk astrology, spirituality. I'm a bit of a channeler as well, and I really bring the cosmos down to earth so we can understand them, so we can apply them and integrate them into our lives so we can live our life to the fullest, right? With that being said, we have a new moon coming in Scorpio. It's happening very late in the night, early morning, November 1st kind of into the night of Halloween. We could already be feeling it. You may already be noticing a lot of these themes that I'm going to talk about in your life in one way or another. I'm going to give examples as well, how I've seen them playing out and coming up in my own life. So as we always start with, what the fuck is a new moon? A new moon is when the sun and the moon align in the sky. Therefore, because the moon is aligned with the sun, we can't see the moon. So the moon basically goes dark in the sky. Because it goes dark, what the ancients really thought of or thought a new moon symbolized to us here on earth was a new beginning. Because if you think about it, everything new is created in the darkness. If you want to imagine something, you close your eyes. If you want to create something new, where does that first come from? Your own mind, a download, a muse, whatever you want to call it. A baby is created in the womb right? A seed is planted in the soil. So creation first happens in the dark. So the new moon is where a new beginning is underway, but we can't quite see. We can't quite see all the way what that new beginning is going to look like and how it's going to play out. We see more of that on a full moon, right? When things are very bright and the full moon lights up the sky. So with that being said, a new moon is usually not as felt for most people. Some people, if you're really in tune, you may feel it more, um, but most people notice full moons a little bit more. But this particular new moon, okay, is a very, very intense one. This one does come with a lot of feeling. You will be feeling this particular new moon because of the other transits that we have going on right around this new moon, right at the time of this new moon. We have a Mars and Pluto opposition that I'm going to talk about. We have a mystic rectangle happening between Mercury, Mars, Uranus, and Pluto, you know? And so we have a lot of things going on right around the time of this new moon that is really going to bring things to a head. And so with that being said, now that we understand what a new moon is, the next layer to that is where the new moon is happening. What sign is it happening in? And this particular new moon is happening in the sign of Scorpio, right? So Scorpio is a water sign ruled by Mars, right? It's in the middle of fall when things are dying. So a lot of times there is a regenerative energy uh, associated with Scorpio. There's an energy of deep emotion because it's a water sign and it's ruled by Mars, very passionate emotion. Scorpio is more of a meticulous sign. It is very driven from how it feels. 
And so we have deep raw emotion when it comes to Scorpio. Scorpio also deals with, because it's ruled by Mars in traditional astrology, which is what I practice, because it's ruled by Mars, it really also deals with the emotional conflicts, the emotional wars, the emotional triggers, the, you know, gunky stuff, the gunky part of uh, our emotional journeys here as humans, right? The conflict of emotions, the conflict that emotions can cause, right? Um, where we feel things on like a very deep and passionate level where emotion gets kind of clogged up, right? Because Scorpio is a fixed sign. So where emotional gets kind of, where emotions kind of get clogged up and they aren't moving as freely or as passively. So this is where we kind of really start realizing the emotional attachments in our lives that are putting us in dis-ease. So it's like emotional dis-ease where things are creating a conflict where certain feelings, certain emotions, certain attachments are creating a conflict in our lives and that is you know somehow stopping us from moving forward right so scorpio as a sign can also deal with fear because fear is an instinctive kind of primal emotion again mars and water right so it also brings up where we have a lot of fear where we have you know certain uh, primal instincts that are meant for our self-preservation to protect ourselves. Scorpio is kind of known for uh, being very protective and holding grudges for too long and holding on to things for too long. And this is all why. This is all where those kind of, you know, more basic interpretations come from because of this Mars water energy that we have mixed together, creating the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio also kind of rules where we feel shame in our lives. Again, it's the more uncomfortable, confrontational emotions and that doesn't just mean confrontational with other people that can be confrontational within ourselves where we're fighting our own feelings or where we're fighting our own emotions where we're hung up you know on the different intense extreme emotions that we're feeling as humans because everything in astrology everything in life everything in the universe has duality it has polarity right for every light thing there's a dark thing for every dark thing there's a light thing now, Scorpio is a sign because it's ruled by Mars, which is a malefic planet, and it is a water sign. It does usually represent those darker, deeper emotions. Not to mention with Scorpio being a fixed sign, it has this intense energy, right? It really has this kind of like boiling energy to it, right? Like a pressure cooker. Because it's also a feminine sign ruled by a masculine planet, we kind of have this dichotomy here between feminine and masculine. And so there can be kind of this, again, this kind of conflict um, within ourselves or that we see in other people where they maybe are unconsciously or subconsciously kind of holding in um, certain feelings, certain emotions, certain fears, and those things are starting to kind of uh, come to the surface around this time. Scorpio season usually brings some things to the surface that we weren't aware of that are causing conflicts, hangups, etc. within our lives so we can express them and move through them. A huge lesson for the sign of Scorpio and that the sign of Scorpio teaches is vulnerability. Getting those things off your chest, right? Purging those emotions feeling them, even the dark ones, even the heavy ones, even the, the scary ones, they're just feelings. Find a way to purge those emotions. That is really what this new moon is very much about. You know, I just had a conversation today, and this is a very great example of this energy. I had a conversation today with my best friend who has also been going through, you know, this wave of awakening that's been happening in the collective lately, just as I have. She was talking about for so how for some reason the last few weeks, she keeps waking up in fear and panic and anxiety every morning. It's like as soon as she wakes up. And as soon as she said that, I knew exactly what she meant because I've been there a couple points in my life too. And what really was going on in those times were there was a sense of doom. There was this looming sense of doom because I had things that I was scared of that I wasn't completely feeling, right? It's one thing to think like, oh no, I'm, I, felt, I felt them, I talked about, talking about them is completely different than feeling them. Did you feel them through your whole body? That's how we purge things. That is how we express things. It has to come out right? Yes, talking about certain things can help, but when they're very deep, you know, which this energy is pointing to very deep things going on within us and going on with humanity, going on with the collective in general, when they're very deep, there needs to be some kind of purge, right? And when feelings are kind of all clogged up and they've been kind of sitting in the background, 
they're going to come out in times where you're least expecting it. Like for my friend, when she's waking up, her body's in a restful place. That's the best time to bring this stuff up because she's in a clear place. She's sleeping, right? Her mind's not constantly going, blocking her from feeling these things. So it comes up right when she wakes up, right? Right when she comes into consciousness, like, hey, these things need to be dealt with. And you may have to feel them. You may have to go into them. You may have to almost for a minute believe that these things are true for a second, just so you can have the full experience of feeling them and allowing this to leave the body. I went through this like a month ago, um, you know, my last awakening that happened. I, I weeped for hours, you know, because of the darkness and the fear that I was feeling and living in for quite a while because of all of the things out there that are, are meant to kind of scare you these days and right now. This is a very edgy time. There are ma major changes happening. There are major changes that are going to happen, right? But when we live in fear, we create the very thing that we are against basically we are feeding the frequency that's creating the things that we fear in the first place right that is creating the issues that we see in the world in the first place every issue that we have in the world is caused by some form of fear right so we have to feel the fear to release the fear we have to feel the fear to purge the fear and that's so so much what this particular new moon is about you know she was also telling me how like you know all, since this has been happening like the last couple weeks you know a lot of things have been going wrong in her family dynamic in her life etc so she was scared to kind of talk about it because she was scared to manifest it and I was telling her like if you're feeling all this fear kind of behind the scenes and it's in, in your subconscious and it's in your body and it's waking you up every morning like it doesn't matter if you talk about it or not you're already manifesting it because you're in that frequency everything happens from the inside out so whatever wherever you are internally is your attraction point it is, is what is manifesting right which is why we have to purge which is why we have to feel these things because when we don't feel them they stick around right it's like carrying a garbage bag on your back <laughs> you know it's like carrying all the things on your back and wondering why things feel freaking heavy you know and since I personally went through my own purge I talked about it a couple of videos back you know I have felt lighter and I've been able to see the bright side of everything instead of the the negative side of everything and and how you know my my outlook has totally changed and i'm excited for the future i'm excited for what's happening i'm co-creating with so many other people that i feel i don't really know them but i feel them there's so many of us out here that are like awake and co-creating a future that is the best for humanity right now right the timeline that is the best for humanity right now right but when we are stuck in fear and obsession about what's going on in the world or what's going on in our lives, we are not able to get to that co-creative place and we're not really helping anyone either. We're weighing ourselves down and and it adds to the collective fear that we're all feeling. And in fact, and, and you know, me even talking about this right now is so astrologically literal because you know, Pluto is involved in this particular new moon. Pluto really deals with the collective unconscious, collective fear, collective paranoia. And when we live from that place, we almost in a way are in our own hell because the, the weight and the toll that that takes on us kind of drops our frequency. And when our frequency becomes so low, we start feeling disconnected from the divine. We start feeling disconnected from ourselves. We start feeling disconnected from faith and and trust and you know the, the positive things in life we can only see the negative things right and our perception is everything what needs to be purged in your life right now what feelings have you been maybe holding in or holding back that you need to feel and that could be really intense coming up for this new moon or right before this new moon where it's like damn I, i'm realizing i've been so frustrated lately like there could be little symptoms of it, right? But honestly, it's probably coming to a boiling point in some type of way with this new moon and with this Mars op opposition to Pluto. Your little frustrations, your little annoyances, those things could set you over the top and next thing you know, like you're boiling over, you're triggered, everything's coming out, right? So allow the things to come out. Obviously don't take them out on other people, but allow the things to come out, allow yourself to feel these things because they need to be felt, right? And that's what's holding you back likely once you purge all that heaviness and you purge all of those deep you know fear-based things you awaken to something totally different your outlook starts shifting you're no longer weighed down by the old 
you're no longer weighed down by maybe other people's fear, the collective fear, or your own fear, or, you know, what the news is telling you or what social media is telling you, etc. It's not that we can't feel or be aware of any of that, right? But if it's constantly putting you in a, a low vibrational state, how healthy is it for you? Maybe get a little bit discerning if you're only focused on the bad, you're not seeing all the beautiful things happening, right? You're not, your outlook isn't focused on that. So the Scorpio new moon in particular is asking us to get in touch with that which has been buried, hidden, that which is going on underneath the surface and get real about it, right? And be able to be vulnerable about it. Be able to break down so we can build back up, right? Be able to, to be that kind of caterpillar that turns into mush in the cocoon, to be able to transform into the beautiful butterfly and have wings afterwards, right? What shame are you holding on to? What guilt are you holding on to? All of these things are prison cells. Prison cells for your soul. They literally keep you incarcerated. Like I have this theory I've had for the longest time, and I think I said it in my last video, that like shame, guilt, all these things are really what hell is. That hell is really... <laughs> all those types of things because we are our own executioner you know like we are our own worst enemy at times right we we chain ourselves we ju judge ourselves we treat ourselves so negatively we shame ourselves and then when we're living in that we feel stuck and we feel like we can't go anywhere and we feel like we can't do anything and we feel like nothing is happening and we feel cut off from our own divinity we feel cut off from our own power because we're in this victim consciousness because we think that this is all being done to us and we're forgetting that we're creating these things. We, we're forgetting that we are the creator, that we are the universe, right? That's what hell is. <laughs> That's the true hell on earth. Like I said, the other really, really huge thing happening for this particular new moon is that Mars is in Cancer at the 29th degree, which is a very intense degree of a sign. It, anything at the 29th degree is going to be felt way more intensely. And it is opposite Pluto in Capricorn at the 29th degree. Now Pluto is, you know, beginning to finish up its transit in Capricorn that it has been in since like 2008. <laughs> okay, so Pluto has been in Capricorn really exposing any cracks in the foundations of the structures of the institutions, of the, you know, different pillars of power in our world. And we've seen a lot of that. A lot of people in power that we thought, you know, were powerful or that we maybe looked up to at one point or idolized at one point have been exposed for these like really deep, dark truths. And honestly, I think it's going to continue. That We're not even anywhere close to being done, in my opinion. There is so much more right? It's also showing us the corruption where, you know, Pluto and Capricorn being a material earthly sign is showing us the corruption with money, greed, institutions that have, you know, started to care only about money and, and everything is, is a business, right? So when everything is a business, there's this coldness to it where it's like, you know, yeah, we'll give you medicine to temporarily ease your pain, but this medicine is going to come with many other side effects that, you know, where, or you could be addicted to it for the rest of your life. So then you're going to come back, right? So you're going to keep coming back <laughs> because it's a business and they want you to keep coming back, right? Like so many things have been exposed and so much of the world and especially the US, which is where I live, is waking up. We're really seeing that like, oh, all of these you know, structures, these powerful structures have become corrupt and cold and, and filled with greed. All of the celebrities in Hollywood that's been exposed and all the disgusting stuff with that, right? Like, it's like these really dark, icky things have been exposed, you know, political figures, powerful political figures, you know, what it actually takes to be a political figure and the corruption in politics and with politicians and in the government you know a lot of that is money based and if you can who you can do favors to and blackmail and all of it right like it, a lot of these things are corrupt and pluto is showing us that right pluto and capricorn is making that very very clear to us <laughs> um and if it's not clear to you yet then um 
<laughs> I'm sure it will be eventually, like, because it's nowhere near done, right? Nowhere near done. Mars is in Cancer right now, right? Now Mars, you know, doesn't take as long to travel through a sign like Pluto does, but Mars is in Cancer right now. About the emotions, about the, the, the feelings, you know, it's all about the feeling. And so, you know, we have these two polarities where Pluto is kind of deconstructing and exposing corruption in so many powerful institutions and structures and pillars, etc. And Mars is opposite of it, right? And Mars is very much about conflict and challenge and self-will and autonomy and doing what is best for the self. And it is basically versing Pluto. So, you know, what does, what does this mean? What are, what are some of the things that we can see? I took, took some notes on this, so I didn't forget anything. So like I said, first and foremost, this shows me, especially with this blended with the Scorpio new moon, everything's coming to a head. We're reaching a boiling point, whether on a very individual level, personally in your life, um, and in a collective level in a, a broader sense as well. If there's something that you have been, you know, up against or a challenge that you've been up against in your life, or you feel like things have been just moving very slowly in your life, or you have been kind of fighting against something, or you've been feeling like you needed a huge change, this is the time that's going to do that. This is the time that's like, we're going to be having breakthroughs, maybe some breakdowns so we can build back up, right? Um, this is a time where everything's coming to a head. Like today I had, I went to my therapy appointment and I came out and um, out of nowhere, just like it literally hit me out of nowhere and I haven't felt this in a while and it was really nice, but it hit me out of nowhere and I just felt this like jolt of energy, just this jolt of like power, just, just out of nowhere. I was walking to my car and it was just like, Phew! and I just had this like, strong, like determined, convicted, conviction, you know, um, passionate type of urge. And the first feeling I had was like, I'm about to change my fucking life. Watch me like, you know, just dead ass serious. And I was like, Whoa, where did that come from? You know, and then it kind of settled down. And I was like, Wow, I haven't felt that in a while. But those are that's the type of feeling, right? That's a very good type of a, a way to describe this Mars Pluto opposition. Right. Um, and this can come out and be directed towards other things, too. But that's more of an example on like a personal level. Right. On more of a collective level, this could be the strong determination and strong urge to fight against something or fight against the powers that be. Right. To, you know, stick it to the man, you know, something like that to stick it to these institutions, you know, etc. Either way, there's kind of a power struggle forming, right? Or that could form. Again, for some people, this could be a very intense determination to, to make a really big change in your life um, or to finally do something that you've been putting off or to finally face something, finally overcome some challenge. For other people, it could be more of a power struggle where it's like there's something that you're up against, right? But you still have this, there's still this Martian energy of like, I want to do it, right? I want to win this competition, you know? But with Pluto, where Pluto is more of a uh, collective, you know, out there kind of planet, you may be up against something that is bigger than you anticipated in some way, or that is being controlled by things that you're unaware of, right? There may be things that you're unaware of about it because that's very Plutonian. It's very mysterious. It's very kind of like in the shadows. So this could also be courage to finally face a fear. This could be tremendous courage, especially once Mars moves into Leo in the next couple days. Um, you know, it'll still be squaring Pluto by degree, but not, or op opposing Pluto by degree, but not by sign. But this could really be that intense kind of, you know, courage to finally face some kind of fear or to overcome something that has felt like it has kept you in a victim role in your life, right? So the other thing is, um, like I said, major jolts of like fast um, or powerful change, um, breakdowns and potential breakups, you know, this with it being in opposition, there could be certain something that comes up where you're just like, you know what, I'm sick of struggling with this situation or this person, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done, right? Something like that could happen. Uh, deep motivation and deep, you know, kind of drive. So you could really feel like this deep sense of 
again, this deep urge, right, to move forward, to get something done, to face something, to challenge something, to fight something, you know? So, you know, our energy is, is really being directed towards, in a very powerful way, something regenerative, regenerative or something um, that deals with change in some kind of way. There could also be an intense urge to purge things, like I was talking about earlier, right? This intense urge to finally just get rid of things, change things, completely clean something out, and redo it, right? Something like that. Um, we could see very chaotic conflict, <laughs> you know, conflict within chaos. Um, this also is bringing up a very primal energy, like even a very animalistic energy. We could also see themes of sex and power coming up. And again, more themes of, you know, dark power or dark things coming out related to these things, controlling or abusive, kind of with some of the other darker stuff that we could see or some of the darker things that we would, could see and that you do want to watch out for and just be aware of is this sense of ruthlessness abuse, toxicity, violent outbursts or conflicts, force, you know. Um, so you really want to watch out for things like that. I obviously probably wouldn't put myself in a situation where that would be more likely to occur, right? Um, obviously, I don't think we ever intentionally put ourselves in those situations, but um, especially for like the next like week or so, because this is going to be kind of going on for the next week. There is a very cathartic energy here with this, with this new moon. And so, and that's what I would focus on, right? Whatever comes up, how can I transmute this? How can I purge this? How can I shed this layer of skin? How can I get rid of the toxic things in my life, cut these things out, right? So I can heal the way that I want to and do the things that I want to do in my life. Again, there could be like fighting out of fear or um, getting triggered because of fear. There's also just this like intense like struggle to be free from fear and that which is controlling us or holding us down in some way. And likely, it may be something internally or it could be something externally. But in the end, it's like we always have a choice, right? So if it is something externally, why am I choosing this thing that makes me feel like I am, you know, not free or being held back in some way? These are the things that we're really going to be noticing for this new moon in Scorpio. I think that this could be a major awakening for some people. This could be also a major time where we feel this intense need to take responsibility of our life, to grow up, so to say, in some way, to be in charge again of our lives and, and where we're going or a certain area of our lives or a certain situation of our lives, right? Now, what I do like about this new moon is we have a mystic rectangle that is forming between Mars and Uranus and Mercury and Pluto. So even though that Pluto and Mars are opposite of each other, they have this mystical or mystic rectangle forming. So there is still a way to basically find a blend of these two planets, right? Um, Uranus is, you know, kind of Uranus is sextiling Mars and trining Pluto and Mercury is sextiling Mars and, and, or I'm sorry, sextiling Pluto and trining Mars. And so through Mercury and Uranus, which is out of the box thinking, right? Um, kind of shifting our perception, you know, um, doing things in a little bit of a different way or, or getting out of our comfort zone through our thinking, our perception, our speaking, how we are going about things. Even like some unexpected communications or messages or downloads could come in about, you know, these things or how to move through this intense time as well. You know, we could receive uh, some kind of, you know, intuitive guidance or, um, you know, kind of channel some kind of guidance from a higher realm. Um, there's something here that is definitely bringing in a mystical energy to this, a spiritual energy to this, I almost want to say, something from higher realms, you know, to help us kind of move through these intense energies. We also have Venus opposing Jupiter, right? And Jupiter transits are usually pretty positive more so. We also have a kite that is forming between Mars, Neptune, Mercury, and Pluto 
all kind of pointing down to Pluto. Again, Neptune is involved. Spiritual guidance, forgiveness, love, letting go. There's so much happening here that is actually very healing. Like I, I see the divine all over this. I know some people are probably going to look at this and be like, oh my god, the world is ending. Like this, there's something truly divine happening and we chose to be alive during this time to witness one of the most historic changes, the most historic up levels, you know, that humanity is taking because these cycles, these things that have been done in the dark for so long, you know, years, centuries are coming to light, right? Powerful families, powerful people, you know, powerful institutions are being exposed. Corruption is being exposed. We are being pointed towards the truth. And, you know, this, this, um, you know, grand water trine happening, this kite pointing down to Pluto, I think is really this kind of like the, the marker of this time right now. It's like the collective unconscious. We are the creator. Do we want to create more fear? suffering, misery, or do we want to create something new from a pure place, right? Purification is, is also a huge, huge theme right now, right? I talked in my last video about how I did a cleanse and I'm, I'm just at the tail end of the cleanse and I feel great. I mean, it's my spiritual abilities have been on and popping, my intuitive guidance, like my mindset is so much, like everything is so much clearer, right? Like if you can do some kind of purification, you know, whether it's a cleanse, whatever you feel like you need, do it. Because if we want to ascend, right? Um, awaken, right? Whatever you want to call it, right? And when I say ascend, I don't mean like, oh, like, you know, we're, we're like leaving and going somewhere else. Like, no, like we're here to help humanity. We're here to do work on this planet and on this earth, right? Like our mission isn't complete or else we wouldn't be here, right? We chose to be alive during this time, you know? And so, like I was saying earlier, the lighter in frequency we are, the more connection we feel to the divine, the more clear our mind is and purified our mind is, the more clear we are in our body and emotionally, you know, the more clear we are energetically, all of that stuff, helps us to feel connected again to our own divinity and to the truth of who we truly are. And that is the most powerful thing that you can have in your pocket. That's the most powerful thing that you can know. That's the most powerful thing that you can experience. And it will get you through any problem, any challenge, any situation, anything happening in the world or with humanity, etc. So comment down below badass alien if you stayed until this part i appreciate you fam thank you so so much um also i still do personal readings so if you would like a personal reading to get more help more guidance with your chart with what's going on with you in your life whatever you need guidance on click the link in my description and you can you know pick your own time and day that works for you and yeah i love you guys let's go ahead and get to the rising signs Alrighty, scorpio as i always say new moon new you boo <laughs> this is a very very intense new beginning um if you are scorpio rising okay this new beginning is definitely coming with some purging as i talked about in the first part of this video which if you missed <laughs> you are missing out okay you definitely need to go watch the first part of this video we talked all about you okay and your lessons and all kinds of things so definitely don't miss the first part but anyway um this new moon is really bringing in a new beginning that is bringing you back to the depths of who you are you may need to express some things feel some things be vulnerable about some things so you can actually move on from that which has kept you chained stuck or kind of living in the past not really feeling like yourself okay so this is a time where you are remembering who you are coming back to clarity coming back to a sense of alignment within yourself but with that being said we have you know a huge opposition going on with your uh, chart ruler mars and pluto and that's happening 
in your ninth house and your third house. So this could definitely be a time where you are feeling the intensities of the conflicts and the uh, changes going on on a maybe local scale, but also a broader scale, like in the world, right? Because these two houses really represent, like your third house really represents your your kind of local day-to-day -day surroundings, right? Like what's going on near home or close to home or in your day-to-day -day environments that you frequent. And, you know, your ninth house more so represents like what's going on elsewhere, right? That's, that's not close to home, right? And so <clears throat> this has been a massive kind of conflict going on with maybe what you believe in, um, your outlook on life, how you view things, how you see things, right? And what feels comfortable for you versus what feels um, difficult and, and hard or what things kind of put you into a fear, what kind of routines, places, um, people in your surroundings or in your environment <clears throat> kind of keep you like in a, in a not great place, right? Like maybe there's some toxicity there or something or um, something along those lines. And so there's been this kind of, you know, there's this kind of struggle going on with what you believe, what you're yearning for in life, um, maybe to do with traveling or maybe to do with, you know, potentially location, um, you know, things like that could really be happening around this time. The third house can also represent transportation, driving, um, anything to do with cars, <clears throat> siblings, neighbors, friends. I mean, you could have like a, like a really dramatic or horrible kind of neighbor situation going on that, <clears throat> you know, has been happening for a while or on and off or something. Um, but either way, you're definitely like looking to move forward in your life, but it's like something has been holding you back or something was holding you back in terms of your roots or where you're from or your day-to-day -day environment. And so that's where this kind of conflict is really coming in. Okay. And so with Mars being your chart ruler, it's best for you to align with the Mars energy in your ninth house. So it's best for you to see things from a higher perspective, to see things from more of a, you know, passion and individuality kind of perspective, right? Um, to see what you want in the world and face any fears or hangups or issues that you have with that, okay? So um, with that being said, Venus is in your second house, um, opposing Jupiter in your eighth house. So this could also be some opportunities that you may be sorting through or that may be of interest to you financially coming up. So I would definitely pay attention to that. And let's see if there's anything else here. <clears throat> I think kind of expressing yourself, uh, you know, vulnerably or expressing yourself in new kind of out of the box ways can really help with a lot of these things. So you have Mercury, um, in your first house opposing Uranus in your seventh, there could be some kind of quirky things going on with, um, you know, your speaking or how you're going about things lately. Maybe you're making changes to your appearance or, um, you know, kind of getting interested and, and changing your appearance in some way. So that could be coming up too. So let me know down below, Scorpio, if any of that is relating with you and what you are noticing come up. If not, I would love to hear your feedback. And again, if you missed the first part of this video, go back and watch because you're missing out. <laughs> and yeah, we are going to move on to Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius risings, this new moon for you is happening in your 12th house wheel. So this is definitely, 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 definitely a time of shedding your skin. <laughs> definitely a time of purging, shedding your skin, letting things go that have been like trapped in your system or in your life or in your environment or wherever for so long. It is time to let that shit go so you can start anew, right? This new moon is really kind of you know, bringing a, a purging energy with it, bringing a shedding energy with it and showing you where there may still be some deep seated things in your subconscious or going on behind the scenes with it, with you or within your life that need to be faced and addressed. And so this could be um, what begins manifesting over the next few weeks for you that 
you know, you need to look at. And some of these things could be affecting um, your health in some way or could be affecting your your day to day routines, your day to day life, um, your job, things like that. Right. So also we have Mars, the ruler of this new moon. Um, opposite Pluto, and this is a very, very intense opposition. If you didn't watch the beginning, you really, really need to, like seriously. Um, this opposition is really, really intense and it is happening in your second and eighth house. You have learned so many lessons when it comes to your resources, your finances, what you own, what you have, um, you know, over the last, you know, over a decade now, you know, since 2008, Pluto has been here teaching you lessons, right? There's maybe been a lot of burning it down and restarting again, etc. Um, <clears throat> coming into your power, um, learning about power when it comes to resources, wealth, and what you own, what you have, etc. Um, but with Mars here kind of challenging it and opposing it um, in Cancer and your eighth house, um, you know, there's like certain things, certain conflicts that could be coming up with things that you're attached to in terms of either relationships or bonds with other people, investments, um, other financial obligations or opportunities or shared finances or resources with someone else. Um, there's definitely kind of an intense push or pull and you could be making some big changes around this time. This could be either you kind of finally breaking it off with a financial challenge that you've had with something or with someone um you know this could be <clears throat> something coming to light um or something or someone challenging you um <clears throat> but either way this is a time to you know remember those lessons of power <clears throat> and not allow your emotions to completely get the best of you and overwhelm you and this is where the emotional 12th house work really needs to come in of like purging cleansing shedding right? Letting things go from the past that are coming up to for you to kind of see around this time. But something's definitely coming to a head here with your financial uh, situation. So um, let me know how that is manifesting down below, Sag Rising. I would really love to hear your feedback. Um, and if you missed the beginning, go back and watch it because you're missing out. Okay, so Capricorn Risings. Um, this new moon is happening in your 11th house. So the masks are coming off in terms of acquaintances, people that you know, um, social environments, social events, social groups, you know, anything to do with groups of people or your social life, um, this new moon is really, really bringing up. Um, this could definitely be a time where maybe you are, um, you know, connecting with a new social group or a new social, you know, group is coming in or a new event is coming in, you know. Um, this can also bring up topics of like marketing, networking, things like that as well. Um, but so the intensity is really coming in here with the Mars Pluto opposition and Mars being the ruler of this new moon happening in Scorpio. Um, it seems that a new beginning wants to happen here, but for that to happen, there needs to be either a facing of a challenge, a breaking away from a challenge and deciding to go separate ways or something along those lines within you um, and someone else. This could be a partner, someone you're in a relationship with, a business partner, someone you're married to, you know, any someone that you're that you're close to and that you would consider to have a relationship with in your life, right? Um, with Mars being in your seventh at the 29th degree, this is really an intense time for relationships for you as a Capricorn rising. And um you know, what you really want for your life moving forward. Um, you could also be on the receiving end of something as well. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a time where you are making some big changes and some big new beginnings are happening here um, to do with relationships and social situations, like kind of make or break, you know, situations. But there's still a lot of, um, you know, divine help here, right? Um, if you can be... Um, you know, emotionally honest, <clears throat> if you can kind of have faith or have trust um, and see things from a higher level, you know, that is that is really the key here. So let me know how this is manifesting down below Capricorn. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the first part of this video, you are really, really missing out on this one. Okay, so I would definitely go watch it. This energy is going to be lingering for the next couple weeks. Okay, so you're going to want to, you're going to want to watch that. Okay, so 
I go a lot more in depth and say a lot more that, you know, I'm not going to keep repeating in these, in these horoscopes. So definitely go watch that. But okay, moving on to Aquarius risings. So for Aquarius risings, this new moon is happening in your 10th house of career, your future, your long-term goals, your reputation. So that's kind of where this, this new beginning is starting to form for you here. Now you're feeling this make or break situation, this kind of boiling point, um, you know, this kind of something coming to a head. It could feel like a conflict. It could feel like an intense struggle. It could feel like um, a strong kind of determination is coming in, but it really has to do with your health, your wellness, um, your subconscious healing, potentially your job. You know, these things are really going to be what this focus is on with this. So, you know, with Mars and Cancer in your sixth house at the 29th degree, you're ready for some changes, you know, like you're ready to make some intense changes with your health, your body, your job, um, your day-to-day -day routines that, you know, are important to you or you have certain attachments to some of these things. But on a subconscious level, um, there's, you know, a lot of powerful subconscious things going on behind the scenes that, you know, is really kind of um, pushing you towards making these changes, right? Or um, that could even feel like it's stopping you from making these changes, right? So um, with that being said, though, there's a lot of divine help with this new moon. I talked about it in the beginning. So again, definitely make sure you go back and watch that. If you did not, this would not be one to miss. And with that being said, we are going to move on to Pisces Risings. So for Pisces Risings, this new moon is happening in your ninth house of your belief systems, your worldviews, <clears throat> your higher outlooks on life. This could be your religious outlooks, your philosophical outlooks, your spiritual outlooks, your um, political outlooks, you know, things like that, where you kind of explore your higher mind, right? And so this new moon is really shining a light on that. It's some kind of new beginning starting in this area of your life. And um, the intensity with this new moon and the reason this new moon is such a big deal, though, is coming from the Mars-Pluto opposition that we have. And this opposition is taking place in your 5th and 11th house if you're a Pisces rising. And so there could be some kind of push or pull, some kind of challenge, some kind of power struggle, or some kind of fear that you're facing or some kind of strong kind of determination really setting in here, um, you know, in with the areas of life that include children, hobbies, romance, fun, love, and social interactions, social situations, um, events, networking, marketing, etc. So those are some of the areas of life that you could see um, some intense power struggles. So I really could also see this as like matters of the heart that are really coming up and strong and urgent, um, but maybe they feel kind of up against something that feels a little bit more powerful or bigger bigger than you in terms of um you know your your acquaintances the people that you're around or certain people that you feel have the power in some way right um so it's like something that you really want or whatever may feel like it's up against um forces that you know are kind of blocking it in some way right in terms of people in your life or you know it could even be colleagues or whatever right <clears throat> so something like that could be happening um you know this this definitely could also potentially tie in like your career um, or your home and family life as well definitely let me know down below pisces what you're feeling i really like to know how this is affecting you as a pisces rising how this is manifesting for you and where you're seeing it and if you missed the beginning, you're definitely missing out. So go back and watch that. This is not the beginning of a video that you want to miss. Okay, so um, go back and watch that. But anyways, moving on to Aries Risings. So for Aries Risings, this new moon is happening in the eighth house of your financial matters, especially financial matters involving other people, institutions, banks, you know, shared resources or finances. Um, you know, the eighth house can also be, you know, very much about occult practices and taboo practices, things like that. So you could be feeling very witchy <laughs> for this Scorpio new moon. I mean, and it's definitely the new moon to, to, you know, break out a spell for. So I wouldn't blame you. But um, <clears throat> this new moon is really a new beginning here. <clears throat> I don't know what is going on with my throat. <laughs> this new moon is really a new beginning here. 
um, that is manifesting for you in terms of your financial matters, your wealth, um, where, you know, how you're building your wealth, um, things like that, right? So the intensity is really coming in though, because Mars is the ruler of this new moon and Mars is in your fourth house, opposing Pluto in your 10th house, right at the 29th degree. So there's this intense feeling of like a change that needs to happen, like wanting to move forward, wanting to finally move on from something, wanting to make a big change, wanting to like cross this next line or get into this next chapter of life. But <clears throat> there's some kind of either conflict, challenge, power struggle, or something that you need to overcome here in terms of your family, private and personal life, your home life versus your career, public life, reputation, um, future goals, etc. So it could even be like your past versus your future or something like that. Or it could feel like there are certain things that <clears throat> you are striving for or determined about where you're really having this deep yearning that's coming from, you know, this deep yearning for your family or your home life, etc. Um, but you may feel like you're up against, you know, the powers that be or, um, you know, uh, the powers that be in your company or in your career field or whatever, right? I mean, this could also be just a very intense, strong determination to kind of overcome fears in terms of, you know, your career, your future, etc. So that's also um, a way that, you know, it could be playing out as well. So let me know down below, Aries, how it's manifesting. I would love to hear your feedback and, you know, hear what's going on for you down below. And if you missed the beginning of this video, you are really, really missing out. I really, really suggest you do not miss the beginning of this one. Go back and watch it, okay? Like, um, it's it's really important. So moving on to Taurus Risings. For Taurus Risings, this new moon is happening in your seventh house of relationships and other people. Um, so this, you know, new beginning is kind of starting to manifest here and will be manifesting here over the next few weeks. There's definitely a new beginning that's trying to happen in terms of your relationship life. But... We have this Mars-Pluto opposition happening around the same time. Mars is in Cancer in your third house and Pluto is in Capricorn in your ninth house. They're both at the 29th degree, ready to move the hell on, right? So there could be something here going on with your location, going on with your local environment, going on with your neighbors, your community, um, relatives, siblings, you know, um, any kind of family that lives around you or near you, um, friends that live near you that you think of as family, things like that. Um, you know, with Mars being in your third house in Cancer, opposing Pluto in your ninth house of your, you know, higher belief systems and things going on in further parts of the world, you know, places that aren't right in your community or near you, right? Things going on um, at a higher level, right? You know, forces that are kind of you know, at a, at a higher level. Right. And so you could be feeling very, um, triggered, challenged, or like you're needing to face certain fears to do with things that are maybe going on in the world or going on in, in a different area, um, or certain belief systems, um, political views, religious views, etc. um, you know, could be a part of this in some way, but there's definitely this opposition between like focusing on your daily life versus and what's going on around you, kind of like your present moment, versus focusing on things going on on a larger scale, right, in some way. And so that's how you could be, those are some ways you could see this manifesting, but let me know down below if you're a Taurus rising. I would really love to hear your feedback. You may even notice some big changes happening with your beliefs and your outlooks around this time. It's definitely kind of like a boiling point energy. It's definitely like, okay, things are coming to a head. Something needs to change, right? And so, yeah, let me know down below, Taurus. If you missed the beginning of this video, you are really missing out. So definitely go back and watch it because it goes over so much more that you definitely need to know for the next couple weeks. Okay. So moving on to Gemini risings for Gemini risings, this new moon is happening in your sixth house of your health work and day-to-day -day routines. Now this is a new beginning starting to manifest in this area. And that's going to take the next like month or so to really show its full extent. Right. But there's definitely going to be a, um, a lot surrounding this area of life of health work and day-to-day -day routines for the next several weeks. So then we have the intensity really coming in um, here with the Mars-Pluto opposition. And so with that, you know, opposition happening, it's happening in your second and eighth house. And so it's really bringing up intense, like kind of make or break um, energies in terms of your finances, what you have, what you own, what's yours, your resources, 
versus what you share with other people or what you owe to other people or what they owe to you. Banks, shared finances and resources with other institutions, other people, business, investments, debts, etc. So there's kind of this very powerful um, determination coming in with this, but it could also look or play out like a conflict or some friction happening or, you know, kind of a decision to you know, either powerfully overcome something or leave it behind, you know, or kind of change everything, tear down everything and start anew, right? Some things like that, those are some ways that you could see it playing out. I explain a lot, lot more in the beginning though. So go back and watch the beginning if you missed it. But that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini Risings. Let me know down below how you are seeing it manifest so far. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And we are going to move on to Cancer Risings. So for Cancer Risings, this new moon is happening in your fifth house of children, hobbies, creativity, um, love, romance, things like this, sex as well. So this new moon here could really be bringing up these topics for the next few weeks. Um, there's definitely a new beginning kind of manifesting here in this area that you'll also see developing over the next few weeks. But what's really intense that's happening right around this time and over the next week or so is this Mars-Pluto opposition happening in your sign and in Capricorn sign, your opposite sign. So Mars is in your sign and Pluto is in Capricorn. And, you know, this could really be a time where you are feeling that Martian energy of like, you know, individuality, um, autonomy, sovereignty, conviction, um, endurance, perseverance, motivation, um, strong determination. You could be feeling more confrontational or moody than usual. Um, and you may not be caring so much about the conflicts that come from that as you usually may, right? There's like a strong um, kind of energy you have here to kind of fight or to like fight for something that you want or um, to kind of like stand up for yourself or stand up for what's important to you but Pluto is in your opposite sign of Capricorn. So, you know, with this opposition, so there could be um, a very strong, intense kind of make or break energy coming up here with you and someone else or you and a relationship within your life or you and your partner, you and your business partner, you know, something along those lines. There's definitely something here um, or it could just be an intense, you know, an intense urge to make some big changes, make, you know, change the relationship somehow or change the relationship dynamic somehow or um, confront a fear that maybe you've been, you know, holding back from in some way, right? So let me know down below, Cancer, how you are seeing this manifest. I would really, really be interested to know and hear your feedback. So definitely make sure to let me know down below and leave me a comment. And um, I went over so, so much more in depth and so much more detail and added so many other examples in the first part of this video. So go back and watch that if you skipped ahead like you're really gonna want to catch that because it's really important for the next couple weeks okay so okay moving on to leo rising so for leo risings this new moon is happening in our fourth house of home and family and our personal lives our personal matters our private life right so there's some kind of new beginning kind of starting to manifest here and that we're going to be seeing manifest over the next few weeks um and so Basically, what's making this new moon so intense is that we have Mars and Pluto opposite of each other, right? So Mars is in Cancer in our 12th house and Pluto is in Capricorn in our 6th house. So there could be kind of a conflict or struggle going on in terms of our health and our wellness. What's going on behind the scenes subconsciously and energetically versus what's going on physically and in, you know, in the 3D world, right? And so there's could be this, and this is a very intense time to like make some big changes in your life. This could be stopping an addiction, quitting a habit, you know, finally going on that diet, you know, like um, finally starting to work out. There's a strong determination here that can really, really be used for good if you allow it, right? If, if you channel it towards that, right? Um, now, this could also be for some of you, um, some intense kind of subconscious triggers coming to the surface or um, some triggers from the past or intense things from the past kind of coming to the surface or um, getting into a conflict with your boss or just up and quitting your job or, you know, something like that. So it's a very make or break kind of energy, right? It's like either we're gonna make some big changes and be really freaking determined about it and overcome these challenges 
or we're walking away, right? And so you can make some really, really big changes in your life during this transit and they could be very positive. You know what I mean? Um, it's like you're ready to move forward. You're ready to kind of come out of your maybe cocoon phase of healing and really step into um, a new phase of your life. And that could bring up like this sense of conviction or even frustration a little bit. Um, but again, it can be channeled for powerful change if you want it to be, right? So let me know down below, fellow Leo Risings, how you are seeing this come up in your own life. I talked a lot about how I've been kind of seeing it come up in the first half of this video, and it's super powerful. I went over so, so much more, so many other ways you can see this playing out. So if you missed the first half of this video, go back and watch it. Like you are gonna wanna watch it. It will cover the next couple weeks for you because this energy is going to be present the next couple weeks. And yeah, you're not going to want to miss it. So go back and watch it if you if you skipped ahead. Okay, so Virgo Risings. For Virgo Risings, we have the Scorpio New Moon happening in the third house of your local environment, you know, your community, your town, neighbors, you know, things going on around you, the kind of you know, random places that you may frequent around you. You may even find new places, you know, for the next couple of weeks with this new moon, or you may start, you know, discovering new places that you hadn't known about before or start hanging out with like friends, relatives, family, um, siblings a little bit more often, you know, around this time. You may just be out and about a little bit more around this time uh, with this new moon happening in your third. Now, what makes this new moon really powerful and not just an ordinary Scorpio new, Scorpio new moon is that we have Mars and Pluto um, opposing each other, which is a really, really powerful transit, especially right now. They're at 29 degrees of their signs and it's a lot, right? There's this very um, strong make or break energy that's happening right now. This very strong, like coming to a boiling point energy that can cause some frustrations. It can cause some really powerful, um, explosive kind of conflicts or triggers. So you definitely want to watch for this. Now, where this is coming up for you, you have Pluto in your fifth house and Mars in your 11th house. So there's kind of this dichotomy between, um, you know, doing what you want to do and what interests you versus the collective and other people in your social life, right? And so there's kind of this push and pull between those two um, where there could be, you know, a lot of masks coming off in terms of the people in your life or friends or you know, situations with friends or situations with acquaintances or networking, marketing, etc. Um, but there's kind of this powerful urge to move forward and overcome certain fears, certain challenges that are coming up this time to do with these areas in some way, shape or form. And that's really what this is kind of uh, boiling down to, right? And so let me know down below, Virgo, how you are seeing this manifest for you so far. I would really love to hear your feedback and to hear what all is coming up for you during this time. Um, I'd be very interested to know. And if you missed the first part of this video, go back and watch it because I went way, way more in depth. I gave so many different ways that this could be playing out. So definitely you do not want to miss the first part of this video. Okay. It's going to it's gonna have you knowing how to handle the next couple weeks with this very intense energy. So, okay, so moving on to Libra rising. So for Libra risings, the Scorpio new moon is happening in your second house of your own money, your own resources, your own um, finances, the things that you own yourself. And so there is definitely a new beginning that's starting to manifest here and that will manifest over the next couple weeks. Now, what makes this new moon so intense is that we have the Mars-Pluto opposition happening right at the time of this new moon, and they're at 29 degrees in their respective signs. And that for you is in your fourth and 10th house. So there is a potential power struggle, a potential fear being faced, a potential challenge that you've been trying to overcome, or a potential make or break situation here happening to do with your career, your future, your goals, your reputation, your public image, and your home family, personal life, private life, etc. right? So these two could feel like they're a little bit at odds or like they're in an opposition because they quite literally are. Like you could want one thing for your future, your, your public life, your career, and want another thing for your family life, but there's something conflicting here. There's something that needs to be faced, addressed, challenged, overcome, um, you know, something. This could cause a conflict, this could cause an upheaval, or this could be a very big change that you're making or that's made in your life in some way. Um, that causes things to change in a, in a very big way, right? And so <clears throat> I would really, really love to know Libra Risings, how
how you are seeing this happen and how this is manifesting for you down below because I'm truly, truly interested and curious. Um, so, but I explained so, so much more in the beginning part of this video. I went into a lot of depth. It's really powerful. And I talked about how to get through these next couple weeks with this energy and gave a lot more examples of how this could be playing out, um, for us. So definitely go watch the beginning if you missed the beginning. And with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.